Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to How Fast Can I Get Terror Spike Boots, Episode 2. Uh, this is the second episode, so if you haven't seen the first one yet, I recommend you go ahead and check out the description for the link to this previous episode, and I'll also try to link it on screen. Uh, just to give you a quick recap what happened last episode, I went to the ice biome to start my Splunkin, I found the uh, um, ice skates, and then a little bit later, a um, undead miner showed me a nice cabin, luckily, and I got the flurry boots, and that was about it. Uh, that's the only progress we made towards the frost spark boots, which I'll be combining with the lava raiders. With regard to the lava raiders, actually, I made no progress last episode. And after all of that, that was about an hour and three minutes of gameplay. So that's what we're that's where we're at right now, about an hour and three minutes or so, um, at the time of uh, this episode. So. With that out the way, make sure you check out the previous episode, and if you've already seen that, let's go ahead and get started with this one. So this episode starts out with me getting money via stained glass, thanks to all the gems that I've gotten from the farm as well as Blunkin, and I'm mainly getting money for the mini shark as well as a certain item from the traveling merchant whenever he shows up. I also took the liberty to start upgrading some tools like my pickaxe and bow to help me with Splunkin a little bit better and I tried to do a little bit of gem corn farming but um, that didn't work out too well for me. After dying I decided it was time to maybe try to do something about it so I took a gravity potion to look for some floating islands and I found one pretty close to the main base. And once I managed to get inside of the floating island chest, it was wings, so that was pretty lucky. The first chest had wings, no more fall damage, I could have used that like at least two minutes ago. Uh, the next island was li like literally 69 blocks across the sky, and it was super close. I managed to get into that one, and that one had the Star Fury, which for me is good, because the Star Fury I can use for Splunkin. And since I don't have any um, shine potions or splunker potions, I decided to keep going left when my um, gravity potion ran out and that took me to the jungle, which I need to go to the jungle of course. Unfortunately, there happened to be a blood moon as soon as I reached there and I hit one of those weird golden coin portal things that drops a bunch of golden coins and there was another chest there that I didn't get to access and yeah, I kind of just got overwhelmed with enemies. Unfortunate, that's how my first trip to the jungle turned out. I died at least one more time before I decided, you know, maybe I should work on the elevator just to wait out the blood moon for tonight and do something productive while I'm waiting. So while I was working on the elevator, uh, I noticed that it turned back to daytime thanks to the water, so I quickly headed back over to the jungle to try once again. And I was able to collect the money that was there, it was like 7 gold. And then I checked the surface chest, and the chest had an aglet inside of it, which is awesome because I need the aglet for lightning boots. So I finally find the entrance to the underground jungle, I start doing a little bit of spelunking, and I find the cabin thanks to the Star Fury. I checked the chest that was inside of the cabin, it was just Hermes boots which I don't really need. And I found a weird shrine that was like uh, made out of rich mahogany instead of the usual shrine blocks, which I thought was pretty weird. But I went ahead and checked the chest, and what do you know, it's the anklet. So after about 5 minutes of jungle spelunking, I basically have everything I needed so there was no need for me to stay at the jungle anymore. So I went back home to do a little bit of base expansion to accommodate for NPCs that came. And because I do need to talk with some NPCs, I need some people to show up. So I decided, you know, maybe I should do some base expansion and I worked on the base just a little bit. So after I finished up building my houses, or expanding the base, I figured it was time to get some dynamite and head to the right to find the crimson. I wanted to find the crimson in order to blow up the crimson hearts and trigger goblin invasions so I can get the goblin tinkerer as well as maybe find the gun for the arms dealer to show up so I can buy the mini shark from him. I quickly found the crimson to the right and it was kind of like blocked and I had to like mine my way inside. And then when I got inside the crimson, that's when I realized that the dungeon was literally right underneath it, or at least like traveled underneath the crimson, which was very weird. Never seen that before. But I got the crimson heart, and I blew the first crimson heart that I found open, and I got was... Wait for it. Yes, I got a gun from the first one, just like I wanted, so that means that the arm tailor is surely to appear soon. Then I blew up another one just for the heck of it, and I got the crimson rod from it. So, went back home, and decided to go down the elevator to do some more exploration, and I found a mushroom field. And while I was, while I was spelunking, the arm tailor did show up, so now it's time to purchase the mini truck from him. 
So what I would say if I had enough money to buy a mini shark, I did not have enough money to buy a mini shark, but I figured I could go to the to the desert and that area that I thought looked like a pyramid, I can just blow it up. Best case scenario, I find a pyramid, I get pyramid loot. If not, I at least will get some sand that I can use for stained glass and then sell that to the arms dealer or whatever to buy the mini shark, which is exactly what I did. And after buying the mini shark, I also bought a lot of ammo in preparation for something important. And that important thing was fighting Aya Cthulhu. So right now I'm just prepping my arena, but I'm gonna fight Aya Cthulhu later tonight. Now the reason why I am fighting Cthulhu is because I just want to make my life a little bit easier with regards to wearing armor. So if you don't know, uh, Aya Cthulhu has a chance to spawn like every night or something like that. Um, after, uh, if you have more than 3 NPCs, if you have over 200 HP, and if you have more than 10 defense that night, I, uh, Cthulhu has a chance to show up. So just to make my life a little bit easier with like wearing armor since I am in master mode, and you know just like better survivability and maybe armor that can help me mine a little bit faster i figured you know it's probably in my best interest just to kill cthulhu so i don't have to be in fear of it constantly um, spawning at night time and with that cthulhu is dead so i can now wear whatever armor i want to so after the fight with cthulhu i went ahead and i made a gold watch to keep tabs of the time when i'm underground spelunking and then i went underground to do some spelunking so what is the main goal for me right now it's kind of like to get to the lava layer of the caverns, that way I can search the chests that spawn there and they have a chance to have the lava charm inside of it. As well as find the water walking boots if I want to like try to do this without fishing. Um, I haven't ran into any water chests yet besides this one that I found, this is the first one and unfortunately didn't have the boots. But yeah, that's the main goal for now. I'm also going to be waiting out for the goblin invasion to occur so I can find the goblin tinkerer. Afterwards, I found some obsidian, so I got to work right away um, flooding this cave and trying to get as much obsidian as I could because I will need this for the lava waders. You do need to use obsidian a couple of times in the lava wader recipe. Also, in the event that I make it to hell and I need to get hellstone equipment or armor or whatever for whatever reason, I'll also have some obsidian saved up for that as well. So I went home to make the obsidian skull to try and get started with the lava waders at least. And then I also wanted to try to get blink roots. Now blink roots can spawn at like any elevation. All they need are, are mud or dirt blocks to spawn. So I decided to just put like a slight little dirt bridge outside of my house and hopefully blink root will start spawning on top of it. And that way I can start making splunker potions since I do need blink roots to make splunker potions. And the reason is because it'll help me find the lava chests a little bit easier as well as the water chests that are underground in the caverns there. And that'll hopefully speed up the process for me making the Terra Sprite boots. Something else I decided to do was to put a tiny little room next to my um, gemcorn farm that has no light whatsoever. And the reason being is because if I do manage to get a blink root seed, blink roots grow faster if there's no light. So I figured, you know, just a tiny dark room without any light in inside of it. I can plant my blink root seeds here and they'll grow faster here. So that way I can get more Splunker potions faster to help me with uh, Splunkin. Eventually I found some blink root while Splunkin. So I went ahead and planted the seeds and now I can start making Splunker potions after they start growing. So I spent what seems to be like a good two hours or so underground just Splunkin, going around getting various chests. Occasionally I go up to the surface to check the blink root because I'm trying to pump out the splinker potions as the blink root are growing and trying to start my blink root farm. Uh, so far I'm not having too many too much luck with the chests. I've, I'm going through mainly the lava layer and not getting any lava charms unfortunately. But eventually the traveling merchant shows up and he gives me the life form analyzer. Now that is the item I stated before that I was trying to get from him. Well I kind of hinted at it. But that's really important to get because that'll show me where the goblin tinkerer is whenever I do the goblin invasion. And most importantly it'll show me nymphs on the, that are nearby and if I kill the nymph I can get a metal detector which will help me locate more chests which will eventually lead to a lava charm or a water chest. So about 20 minutes later a goblin invasion finally occurred. I've been waiting on that forever. So I went ahead and I like, quickly dealt with the goblins and finished up the event because I desperately needed to find the goblin tinkerer. 
So as soon as I finished, I went back down Splunkin to try and find some more chests as well as locate the Goblin Tinkerer. It didn't take me too long to find the Goblin Tinkerer tied up. So I went ahead and I purchased the, t the Tinkerer's Workshop as well as the Rocket Boots right away. So I went home because it was finally time to assemble at least one half of the Terra Spark Boots. I went ahead and got my Flurry Boots, my Ice Skates, the Aglet, the Anklet, and just about everything else I needed. Right away I made the Spectre Boots, followed by the Lightning Boots, and then I made the Frost Spark Boots. So this episode was very monumental from a progressional standpoint. I basically went ahead and finished off the Frost Spark Boots for the path on the Terra Spark Boots and I started with the Lava Waders by getting the Obsidian Skull. So now that's left is to just finish off the rest of the components for the Lava Waders and then I can craft the Terra Spark Boots. I will be attempting to do this without fishing as fast as I can so I'll, I'll only use fishing as a last resort so if I have to go through the entire lava layer of my world to find the lava charm then so be it but I will do that first before I attempt to fish for anything but either way thank you very much for watching in the next episode we'll continue the adventure to finish up the lava waders and then craft the terra sprite boots so make sure if you enjoyed the video make sure you go ahead and leave a like comment and subscribe and check out the first episode if for some reason you've already watched this and you haven't seen the first one yet link in the description uh, make sure you stay tuned for more Terraria streams hardcore master mode various classes thank you very much for watching and see you in episode 3